Taking the time to put together a joint or a project that you're gonna weld and getting it all done properly is one of the most important things to having good success and good results with welding. Many times I've seen great welds completely botched by missing out on a really important thing. So tell me if this has ever happened to you. You take the time to put something together properly and before you go to flip down your mask to weld, you see broken tacks. Stop what you're doing right now. We need to take care of this problem right away. I've worked with many people over the years who take the time to put something together carefully and when assembling it, great attention to detail. However, when some people go to actually weld out this project and we see that one or two tacks may have popped open, a lot of people have a natural reaction of just saying, ah, screw it. It can't move that much, can it? Yes, it can. <laughs> so let's get a plan together to take care of this problem so we can weld out some sweet looking stuff. First off, why does this happen? To be honest, there's a ton of different reasons that this can happen. Residual stress from putting something together, lots of different things. But one of the main things that's common with TIG welding aluminum is distortion. Because when working with aluminum, this material is a little less rigid and it likes to move around way more than steel or stainless steel or something like that. We're gonna see welding distortion happen really easily, even when tacking something together. When we are tacking something together and it has not been welded out yet, assembled parts which are unsupported are gonna flex and they're gonna move around in all kinds of crazy ways. Let me tell you about this one story where I essentially saw this go drastically wrong. The story is not about me for once. So there was a formed piece of aluminum, kind of like this, rough shape, kind of from what I remember. This formed piece was butted up against another sheet of aluminum like this. After putting it together, the plan was to weld all along this edge here. Now, from what I remember, this structure was actually quite large. From what I recall, it was tacked roughly around here, roughly around here, and there was a tack on the end somewhere around here. From what I recall, it was kind of put together a little bit haphazardly because of course a formed piece has residual stress here and there. After it was tacked together, this tack right here had popped and broken. Now this person had noticed that this tack was now broken, but essentially these two pieces had not formed any gap. They were still butted up tight to one another. So even though it had broken, it was still fit up pretty well with the part it was gonna be welded to. And unfortunately this person decided not to do anything about it. So as they started welding here, going from right to left, as they approached this area, which was now unsupported, these two pieces began to separate pretty drastically. So by the time they reached the point on the end where they easily could have just retacked these things together properly, the welding distortion caused this gap to grow to approximately half of an inch. As I said, aluminum welding can cause things to warp very quickly, especially when you're traveling over it with relatively long passes, crazy things can happen. So so let's just say by the end of the day, this person was very well acquainted with a grinder. By the end of the day, got it fixed though, it's all good. I was actually someone to help fix this one. Got it cut out, redone, no harm, no foul. But obviously everybody used what happened here as a chance to learn and move forward. Problem fixed. So when tacking something together, if you do a small tack like this, these little cuties can be under immense pressure before welding and especially during welding. So while there's many reasons that they may crack or break, let's go over how to get better tacks laid down so you do not have to worry about this problem, especially when we see something like this. We can see that this little cutie here has a crack going right down the middle of it. This can happen on all kinds of joint configurations. When we see one area has been heated up, sometimes we can see this with either filler or no filler, but whatever was used to put it together, this has been worked over by our overall heat input. Because the area that we have affected with our heat input is so small, if any stress comes along in any way, this little buddy of ours is gonna break for sure. My students and I work on this all the time in my online TIG welding program, and this is one thing we always make sure we wanna do when we're putting something together. We definitely wanna make sure we use filler material. We need to add a little bit of strength to the area that we are heating up. Doing these with no filler material most of the time just doesn't cut it. It's very common that you're gonna start welding and you're gonna hear one or two of these pop and let go. Especially if you are starting a full pass on one of these. If you have no filler material to strengthen this thing, and this is under any kind of pressure, as soon as you flash up, this is gonna pop and let go, no doubt. But here is one of the most important tips I give when people are struggling with tacks that are being a little bit naughty. Add movement to your tacks. Now, what do I mean by this? Take a look at the first one again here. This has been heated up in one single area, that's it. When I refer to adding movement to a tack, 
This is what I'm talking about here. I recommend doing something like this, where we essentially see a bit of movement from the first part of the tack to where we finish the tack. So essentially what we're doing is two tacks instead of one. Sometimes it's not that much, but even the tiniest bit of movement combined with a bit of filler material, this stands a much better chance to hold and be able to resist some strain. Remember, our joint can be under pressure before welding and especially during welding. Adding some filler material, a little bit of movement, this is absolutely gonna give yourself a better shot at getting these things to hold strong. Another really important thing here, when I say adding filler material, some people might assume adding more filler material makes it stronger. Not go overboard with this one. While I say we absolutely wanna add filler material, remember, we are gonna weld over this later. We want to keep consistency with our weld passes as we travel over these areas. I recommend making each tack roughly the exact same size and profile as the weld that is gonna go over it later. Do not overfill these. Do some planning ahead of time. Figure out strategically where each one of these is gonna go, and then think about the size of the weld that is gonna go over it later. If we have things planned out as well as this, later on when we're traveling along, we can perform a stop start on one of these, and nobody will even be able to tell it was there. Each tack, like I said, is gonna have a bit of filler, a slight bit of movement to it, and gonna be placed appropriately with proper size and profile, taking a good look at everything before you weld it out, making sure none of these have broken during assembly. You are now ready to weld. Party on. There are even more important things to make sure. You get best results when tacking a joint together. We talked briefly about how important planning is here. This episode right here goes into even more important stuff to consider when putting your project together. This will make sure you get the best results and have the easiest time welding it. That episode's linked in the description below. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. For Pacific Arc TIG welding, my name's Dusty, Bill and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.